Okay, so we're going to explore this interesting number pattern. We've got this number 153846 is two times this number 76923. But then if we take the 6 at the end of our first number and move it to the front, keeping the other digits, we've still got a multiple of 76923. And if we do the same thing over and over, put the 4 at the front, then we put the 8 at the front, and so on, we always get a multiple of 76923. So the purpose of this video is to explore where this comes from and how someone may have discovered this kind of result. So we'll start off actually with a slightly simpler example, and this is all to do with recurring decimals. So we'll start off with the fact that 1 7th has a nice recurring decimal structure of 0 0.142857, then this will all repeat 142857 and so on 142857 forever and we just use this bar to denote that all of those digits are repeating. And what's really interesting about 1 7th is that 2 7ths has the same digits, 2, 8, 5, 7, 1, 4, all repeating. So we've got, we've taken this 1, 4 and moved those to the end essentially, but it's the same string of digits, just slightly reordered. And if we go on to 3 7ths, we have 0 0.428571 recurring like this. So we have, we do the same for 4 sevenths, 5 sevenths, and 6 sevenths. And this is really useful now because essentially if we look at 2 sevenths, we know that 2 sevenths is twice as big as 1 seventh. So each of the recurring pieces here, this 285714 followed by another 285714, each of these recurring pieces has to be exactly two times as big as each of the first recurring pieces, 142857. So the claim here is that 285714 is twice as big, so it's 2 times 142857. So the easiest way to verify this is probably just to put it in a calculator, but we can understand this in terms of place value as well. So we can understand this as, let's say that 2 sevenths is equal to 2 times 1 seventh, and then let's express each of these fractions now as an infinite sum using their place value. We know that 2 sevenths as an infinite sum, we can write this as the sum from k equals 1 up to infinity of 2, 8, 5, 7, 1, 4, and then we multiply this by 10 to the minus 6k. So you can fill in some of the details here, but it's essentially 2, 8, 5, 7, 1, 4 multiplied by 10 to the negative 6 will give you your 0.285714. Then we multiply by 10 to the negative 12 to get our next recurring piece, and so on. And we can use the same argument. This is all equal to 2 times 1 seventh, so it's two lots of the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7 times 10 to the minus 6k. So here we can actually take out our factors, each of these numbers, because they don't depend on k in each sum. So then we can just see a little bit more rigorously, 285714 times this sum of 10 to the minus 6k is equal to 2 times 142857 times the sum of 10 to the minus 6k. And here our sums cancel out, so we see that indeed 285714 is 2 times 142857. And of course this holds as well for our 42. 8, 5, 7, 1 is 3 times 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7. And similarly for 5, 7, 1, 4, 2, 8 will be 4 times this 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7. And once again, we can do the same for each of our fractions, all of our different numbers with 7 in the denominator. So we'll have a look at this in a little bit more detail to understand why we get this repeating cyclic pattern. And then we'll be able to understand what's going on with this example. So you can see here, We've got this 142857 times different numbers gives us cycling repetitions of the same number there. But here we've got this 76923 is actually nothing to do with any of these digits. So we'll need to understand what's going on a little bit deeper before we come to that. So to understand why we get this repeating pattern of each of these digits for 1 7th, 2 7th and so on, We'll actually just do the division, 1 divided by 7, 2 divided by 7, and so on, just to really get to grips with this. So just following the division algorithm here, 7 doesn't go into 1, so we have a remainder of 1. 7 goes into 10 exactly once with a remainder of 3, then goes into 30 four times with a remainder of 2. 
goes into 20 twice with a remainder of 6. 7 goes into 60 8 times with a remainder of 4. Then goes into 40 5 times, 35 with a remainder of 5. Then 7 7s are 49, so we go into 50 7 times with a remainder of 1. So now that we've reached this point here where we've got the 1, you can see that we're actually going to get the same pattern from here. So 7 goes into 10 exactly once with a remainder of 3, and then goes into 30 4 times with a remainder of 2, goes into 20 twice with a remainder of 4, and so on. So you can understand at this level why we get 0.142857 all recurring for 1 seventh. So now if we look at 2 sevenths, let's do the same. So 7, again, doesn't actually go into 2, so we have a remainder of 2. 7 goes into 20 exactly 2 times. And already we seem to be in some quite familiar territory here. We get a remainder of 6. 7 goes into 60 exactly 8 times with a remainder of 4. Goes into 40 5 times with a remainder of 5. 7 goes into 50 7 times with a remainder of 1. Goes into 10 once with a remainder of 3. And 7 goes into 30 4 times with a remainder of 2. Then we start to repeat. So I suppose the way to understand why we get this cyclic behaviour of all of these digits repeating just with a slightly different start point is there are only seven possible remainders if you include zero when you divide something by seven. You can get zero if it goes in exactly, or you can get one, two, three, four, five, or six. So we're going to have to get one of those as our remainder. So initially we had a remainder of three after doing seven into ten. Here we got a six after doing seven into twenty and so on. So we get the same sort of pattern. So doing 7, now doing 3 divided by 7. 7 doesn't go into 3, goes into 30 exactly 4 times with a remainder of 2. And then you can already see that we're going to get this repeating pattern from here because we're just dividing each of these by 7. So you almost don't need to do any more work at this point. We've already done this. 7 goes into 20 twice with a remainder of 6. And then we could just fill in the rest. 4, 2, 8, 5, 7, 1 and then it will start to repeat from this point onwards. And you could do the same for 4 sevenths, 5 sevenths, and 6 sevenths. So now we're ready to have a look at the original example. So here you can sort of understand where these examples are coming from, as somebody might have been looking at these repeating patterns and then extended this to integers, where we take the repeating chunk, which happens to be here. It's twice as big as the chunk for 1 sevenths here. It's three times as big as the repeating chunk for one seventh and so on. So now we'll have a look at the next example where we're actually going to be looking at thirteenths rather than sevenths. So first of all, let's just find the decimal expansion of one thirteenth. So we're doing one divided by 13 as before. So we have 13 doesn't go into one, still doesn't go into 10, so we get a remainder of 10 now. And 13 goes into 100 seven times. And seven thirteens and 91, we get a remainder of nine. 13 goes into 90 six times, so we get 78 with a remainder of 12. 13 goes into 120 nine times, so 9 thirteens or 117, we get a remainder of 3. 13 goes into 30 twice with a remainder of 4, goes into 40 three times with a remainder of 1, at which point we can see we're starting to repeat ourselves. So 13 doesn't go into 10, goes into 107 times with a remainder of 9, goes into 96 times, and so on. So we get this repeating pattern 076923, all recurring. So you might notice at this point that there are 12 possible remainders we could get when we divide by 13, but not all of them have appeared yet. We've had 1, 3, 4, 9, 10, and 12, but we haven't actually had 2. So when we get on to doing 2 divided by 13, 13, of course, doesn't go into 2. So now we've got a remainder of 2, and we seem to be in new territory here, that we're not going to get a repeat of what we had for 1 thirteenth. So 13 goes into 20 once with a remainder of 7, which is again a new remainder that we haven't seen yet. The 13 goes into 70 five times with a remainder of 5, and then 13 goes into 50 three times with a remainder of 11. So now 13 goes into 110 eight times. So now we get a remainder, 8 thirteens are 104, so we get a remainder of 6. 13 goes into 60 four times with a remainder of 8, and then 13 goes into 80 
6 times with a remainder of 2, so 13 times 6 is 78. And at this point, again, we can see we're going to start repeating ourselves. We've had this remainder of 2, so we get 1, remainder 7, 13 goes into 75 times with a remainder of 5, then we get 3, and so on. So we've now got this 1, 5, 3, 8, 4, 6, which you may recognise from the start of the video. You may also recognise the 7, 6, 9, 2, 3. So now when we go on to doing 3 divided by 13, we'll have 0 point something where we've started with a remainder of 3. So now all of our possible remainders have actually appeared. We've got all of the numbers from 1 to 12 there. We can't get a remainder of 0 just because we know that none of these numbers are going to be exactly divisible by 13. So here we don't need to do any more work. We can just start here with our 2, 3, 0, 7 and continue our pattern from before. So 2, 3, 0, 7, 6, 9, then 9 is followed by 2, at which point the pattern repeats, just using the fact that we've got 13 going into 30 and so on, and we've only got this finite collection of possible remainders there. So when we go on to 4 divided by 13, once again we're left with a remainder of 4 to begin with, which we've seen before which led to a 3 above it, so we'll get 3, 0, 7, 6, and 7, 6 are followed by 9, 2. So we get 3, 0, 7, 6, then followed by 9, 2 as our recurring part there for our 4 thirteenths. When we get on to 5 thirteenths, we're going to have 0 point something where we start with a remainder of 5, which we've already seen, so we're going to get 3, 8, 4, 6, 1, 5. So 3, 8, 4, 6, 1, 5 is now our recurring part. So what I'll do next is write out actually for 1 thirteenth, 2 thirteenths, all the way down to 12 thirteenths. But you can start to see we're getting two different cases. We can even have the 0, 6, 7, 9, 2, 3 one, or we can have the 1, 5, 3, 8, 4, 6 string repeating in different cycles. So these are the ones which so far involve the 1, 5, 3, 8, 4, 6 string but these other ones are involved with the 0, 7, 6, 9, 2, 3. So in a moment we'll be able to use this and extend to integers like we did with sevenths earlier. So now just like when we were working with sevenths, we can use this insight that 2 thirteenths is twice as big as 1 thirteenth, which tells us then that the decimal part, this 1, 5, 3, 8, 4, 6, is going to be twice as big as the recurring decimal part for 1 thirteenth. So this is telling us that 1, 5, 3, 8, 4, 6 is going to be twice as big as 7, 6, 9, 2, 3. So of course the 0 doesn't add anything of value there. So then if we go through these putting the 6 to the front now so we get them in the same order as we had in the beginning, where do we find this? This was 8 thirteenths. So this is going to be 8 times as big as the decimal part for 1 thirteenth. So this number is 8 times 7, 6, 9, 2, 3, and then we can start to fill in the others as well. So here, 4, 6, 1, 5, 2, 3 was 6 thirteenths, so we get 6 times 7, 6, 9, 2, 3. We take the 8 to the front, 8, 4, 6, 1, 5, 3. You can see this one was 11 times bigger than 1 thirteenth, so we have 11 times 7, 6, 9, 2, 3, and 3, 8, 4, 6, 1, 5, this one, it was 5 thirteenths, so we have 5 times 7, 6, 9, 2, 3. And finally, bringing the 5 to the front, 5, 3, 8, 4, 6, 1. This one corresponds to 7 thirteenths, so we have 7 times 7, 6, 9, 2, 3. So whenever you see an example of something with numbers like this, there is often some underlying structure behind it. So here we can see for this example, it's not that somebody's just put lots of numbers into a computer until they've found something of interest that's here coming as a result of the underlying structure of recurring decimals of a thirteenth. And if you want to construct further examples, you could try different denominators. So instead of doing sevenths, thirteenths, you could try a different denominator there. I'd recommend to use a prime number so that you get something which repeats a decent number of times. But it's possible to generate even more examples of collections of numbers like this where we cycle through and they all happen to be multiples of the same thing.